It is now possible to drastically enhance any image using AI. The results are mind-blowing, literally transforming an unusable grainy photo into a high-quality masterpiece. Not only that, but it works on cartoons, video games, and old photos just as well as it does with real people and places. The best thing about this, it's highly customizable and you can do this entirely for free at home. So today, I'm going to show you how this works, we're going to set this up together from scratch, and then I'll share some tips and tricks so you can determine if this will be useful to you and your creative projects. Anyways, I'm super excited. I know you are too. All right, let's go. Now, full disclaimer, this workflow as well as all of our other drag and drop workflows are available on our Patreon. Huge thanks to our patrons. To upscale any image, we're going to be using Comfy UI and the Ultimate Stable Diffusion Upscale node. Comfy UI is a free and generative AI software that lets you do all sorts of crazy stuff like this and this. We've covered installing Comfy UI in a previous video, but if you're new here, it's as simple as downloading it from the GitHub page and running the install.bat file. Once your Comfy UI is installed, make sure to also install the Comfy UI Manager, which makes your life a million times easier by letting you download AI models, custom nodes, right there inside of your browser. If you're having any trouble installing Comfy UI, we also have a one-click installer available on our Patreon page. And once you have both of those installed, the final piece is to get the ultimate stable diffusion upscale node. To do so, navigate to the Comfy UI manager and then click on the custom nodes manager. And here in the search bar, search for ultimate SD upscale. Here you'll have an option to be able to install it and afterwards just restart Comfy UI and it should be all set to go. Now you have everything that you need except for a way to activate it. Comfy UI uses nodes, which is a fancy way of saying that you connect wires to boxes and stuff happens. If we want to create a node, we can just double click on the canvas and a search window will pop up with a preview of the nodes. Let's think about how upscaling an image works. We want to have an input image and send it to an AI that upscales that image and shows us the final result. First, let's go ahead and get that image. To load an image into Comfy UI, we can double click on the canvas, type in load image, and that'll pop up the load image node. This is how we load an image into Comfy UI. By default, it's just gonna show an old image that I had before. But if we wanted to use a different picture, I can either click here to choose a different file or I can just drag and drop an image into the center of this node. So for this example, I'm gonna use this still from Spirited Away. And next thing that we wanna do is upscale the image. So let's add the ultimate SD upscale node by double clicking and then typing in the search bar ultimate and you'll see ultimate SD upscale pops up right there. Now, one thing that you're going to notice is if you click and drag on the nodes, you can move them around. And if you look at the tiny little dot here next to image, if I clicked and dragged that out, it will create a wire, which allows us to then connect this to another section. So there's all these different inputs for this node. Now this looks complicated, but it's not actually as tricky as it looks. So here we're just connecting the dots and it's pretty obvious. If you look at the load image node, you can see here that there's an image with a blue dot right next to it and if we clicked and dragged this out it connects right over to the ultimate SD upscale image node but there's a bunch of other sections here such as model positive negative VAE and upscale model but the image dot makes sense because that's where the image for this upscale but the model is actually going to be the AI image generation model the next two positive and negative dots are going to be your prompts so positive meaning what you want to see and negative meaning what you don't want to see. And then we have VAE, which stands for a variable auto encoder. And in the context of AI generating images, you honestly don't really need to know what it means. Just know that it works with your image generation model. And the last part is your upscale model which is the specific model used for upscaling. Let's go through this one by one. For the first part under model, I'm gonna be using flux. And as a little trick, instead of double clicking in the canvas, if I was to click and drag from this model dot outwards and let go, I'll see this pop-up window with different options for nodes that it wants to see here. In this case, we're gonna select on checkpoint loader simple. The reason they call it a checkpoint loader is because it doesn't just load the AI model, but it also loads all the bundled stuff the AI model needs. Here, I'm gonna select Flux Dev FP8, and the model wire is already connected to the ultimate SD node. And here you're gonna see that we also have a VAE dot, which we can connect over, but we're left with this one dot in the middle, which is yellow, and it says clip. 
Clip is what captions the photos when the AI models were trained, and that's what helps them understand what was inside of the images. When we prompt the AI model to make us a picture, we're actually calling on the clip to say, find me pictures that look like these keywords and make a picture that looks kind of like that. But if we drag the clip, we'll get a text encode option here. And you're gonna see that this takes a text area, which is really just whatever our prompt would have been for an AI image generation. On the right side of it, we have the output as conditioning. And the reason it says conditioning is because this can either be positive or negative meaning this can either be a positive prompt or a negative prompt. Now, since we're upscaling, we actually don't need to type in anything, but we still need to connect the wires for the node to work. Another little trick is since we're using Flux, instead of using the regular clip text encode prompt, I can delete this and instead double click and instead use the text Flux encode, which will also give me just a little bit more additional options in terms of the guidance here. So let's go ahead and connect the clip over and then connect the conditioning to the positive section. And then to duplicate this node, we can press Control C and Control V and that will create a second text encode node, which we can then connect to the negative section and also connect this to the clip section. So here we should have the loaded checkpoint, the clip going to the clip text encode to the positive, and then also going to the negative. Now, a tricky thing about Flux is that it doesn't really read negative prompts at all, so it doesn't even care what's inside of this, but just know that you need to connect these nodes anyways just to make it work. And look at that, managed to connect just about everything that we needed to this ultimate SD upscale node, except for the final piece, which is the upscale model. So here, I'm gonna click and drag out from the upscale model, and then we can select on upscale model loader. Now there's a bunch of different upscalers, each of them with their own benefits, so I highly recommend you play around with them depending on your image. In this case, I'm going to be using the 4x Foolhardy Remacri upscale model, which is also for free online. You can download other upscale models from the Comfy UI Manager or by Googling online since there are a bunch of free ones. And we have our recommendations set up on our Patreon page as well. Now we have everything set here, but it's looking kind of ugly with all of these nodes. So let's go ahead and clean this up really quickly. Just gonna click and drag on the corners here to resize them. And then I can also hold on shift on my keyboard, which will let me snap the nodes into place in a grid. If I wanna select multiple nodes, I can also hold on shift and that'll let me move multiple nodes at the same time. So let's go ahead and move these here to where they make sense. And let's put this right here. That way we're getting rid of all the negative space and don't see all of those ugly wires. Another trick for Comfy UI is if you have everything put in place where you want them, just select all of the nodes and press P on your keyboard. That way that they don't move around when you click on them. Okay, now lastly, let's see the final upscaled image by dragging out from the image node, but we don't wanna just see the upscaled image. I wanna compare it to the original. So to do that, let's use the compare image node by typing in compare image and selecting on the RG3 node here. This node takes two inputs, so you can see it takes an image A and an image B. I'm gonna connect the upscaled image to image A, and let's take the original image and put that into image B. Now let's also resize this node. Nice, now that that is all set, we can run this by hitting on the Q button in Comfy UI, and this will trigger all of the nodes, sending them through the connections, which you'll get to see it working based on the green outline or the bar at the top of them. Now, the way that the ultimate upscale node works is by cutting the picture into tiny little pieces or tiles, which in this case is gonna be 512 by 512. And then it adds a little bit of noise and lets the AI clean up the image. This means it can sometimes produce more details than what was originally there, as you'll actually see in this example photo from Spirited Away. Here is the final result from the upscaled image. And as you can see, it did an amazing job by adding so much more detail to the original image. What looked like an incredibly grainy photo now is so much clearer as you can see by the details on the mouth, on the eyes, the hair, and on the individual lines and shadows and shading. Now, one thing that I did notice though is that it is coming out a little bit strange for the trees. That's actually because our settings were not optimized. As you notice, we just used the defaults out the gate, but we can actually make this even better. One thing to change is instead of leaving the CFG at eight, we can change this to one because Flux does not really work well with a CFG, but instead it's recommended to reduce this to one. And instead of upscaling this by 2.59, let's instead change this to two. And instead of leaving 
leaving the scheduler at normal. I'm gonna change this to simple. And also just to show you how some of these upscale models work differently, we're gonna change this to the 4X Ultra Sharp model, which is another really awesome upscaler. And let's go ahead and hit run. And here is the final result from that. As you can tell, it's added even more details than what was originally in the image. If we were to take a look all the way in the background here at the trees, pretty much unusable, highly pixelated, but after the upscaling, you can clearly tell that there's leaves on the trees. And even this lamppost has so much more detail and clarity, making this image so much better than it was before. Now, if you wanted to actually change the original image even more, the way that we can do so is by changing the denoising amount. By default, it's at 0.2, which is not so much and is actually gonna retain most of the original image. If we were to crank this all the way up to something like 0.5 and then ran it through the AI again, we're probably Probably going to see most of these details getting changed and maybe even parts of the art style changing. But we've already shown an example of using this on a cartoon. Let's actually try it with a real photo. Here I have an incredibly old still photo from Metropolis, which is an old film from 1927. As you can tell, not only is the image incredibly pixelated, but the camera used to film this would not have been able to even pick up as much resolution. So here we're gonna just drop it in and then let's also hit run with the same exact settings. And this is the final image that it has produced. Wow, this is amazing. So let's go through slowly bit by bit. As you can tell, it has created this entire contraption, the person laying in this glass tube. And oh my goodness, the details on this are incredible. Before we couldn't even tell what was going on here, but it has created a much more detailed picture of what seems to be the engineer in this movie scene. Now there are a bit of the details that look a little bit messed up, like instead it's chosen to make this look like a particle system is forming at the bottom of this person. But we could always just retry this again with either a different upscaler model or just by changing some of the denoising settings to get something a little bit better. For example, here I'm gonna change the denoising value from 0 0.02 to instead 0.15 which should hopefully retain a bit of that original image a little bit better. Here it is done with a 0.15 and as you can see it's kept a little bit of the original details much better so we have the shape of the android in the background much more clear as well as our scientists here in the foreground. Now one thing I really love about this is just the amount of details from being able to see not only the clothing that he's wearing but also the ripples and the different textures in the clothing. That's what makes this AI upscaling an enhancement so powerful is that it's not just adding in a higher resolution, it's going through and adding in details where we originally were not able to see before. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg because of course using Comfy UI, you can get much more sweaty when it comes to creating insane workflows. For example, we did a version of this where we were able to take in an input image run it through an AI model called Florence 2, which will then read what's inside of the image, process out the caption and the text from it, and then use that actually as the input conditioning for the positive prompt. That way it's able to pick up those fine details much more better. Take a look at one of these examples here. And of course this workflow as well as all of our other workflows are up and available on our Patreon. If you guys enjoyed this, you're probably gonna enjoy this video where we show you how you can edit and animate any facial expression in a photo or a video. The results are crazy and a whole lot of fun to play around with. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope to catch you in the next one. All right, peace.